call upon Dr. Chandra Sekharan to give a talk on blunt injury to the chest. Respected Mr. President, Honorable Members, Friends, I was stimulated to present this case by a simple fact. At 4 a.m. I had a call from a common friend saying that worker in my office, something has happened. I said, go and get him admitted. He reached the hospital and this is the history. 20-year-old male from North India working here was sleeping on the floor of a house. Wooden lock holding the ceiling of the building gave way, fell on his chest. 4 a.m. The staff nurse, medical officers of public health said, what business chance has got a good case? Blood in his chest. They referred to the cardiac business area. His reply was even more blunt. Ask Chandru to manage. If he doesn't know, ask him to read and manage. If he doesn't know, ask him to call me and manage. <laughs> Very blunt reply. Ask him to manage, ask him to read and manage. If he doesn't know, ask him to consult me and manage. I went through the books, felt chest injury blood should be manageable because despite the PET scans suggestion of Dr. I was very, I learned it, Jay Kumar, the recent comments on breast injury still emphasizes on history and test radiograph to identify the injury and do the appropriate reference. Of course, appropriate reference should be that, basic further and support should be that, otherwise you cannot take on it. X-ray chest showed multiple rib fractures. You can see the rib fractures, it was not very clear. It is there on the anteriorly second. You have got MRI, you can see some of them. Many of the ribs are anteriorly fractured. Doesn't matter, start working. It is there on the three on the left side and three on the right side. Lateral view, spine curvature was normal. Glucose, urea, creatine, other things were not. Hemoglobin, hemoglobin was 10.5, other parameters normal. We maintain the absent saturation, thus the other instruction process is given. Ask him to maintain the saturation, otherwise I will come and intubate. ECG was normal with this. Again, another suggest, we will go back to the others. Now, he developed opacities on the base, lung opacities on the right lower zone and CW, these x-rays are taken within 24 to 48 hours. Refractures, now we see in the adjacent chest. Pneumothorax was on the right side with the pneumonic confusion, right upper and mid blows, bilateral moderate hemothorax. You can see the hemothorax is underlying. Some of the pictures are taken and not come less. The red fractures are there, you can see them here. Well, lower them, just at a point. Yes. These are the fractures. Then bilateral hemothorax, you can see them on the base. And chest tubes were inserted. Of course, I was prepared to insert chest tube, but part of the size is said, I am more experienced than you, I put it. And he did it. That's the only intervention he gave me in this case. Pain continued on both sides anteriorly, intercostal chest tubes were inserted, and 350 ml was aspirated on the right side, 150 ml was drained on the left side. After two days, the chest tube stopped, drainage stopped, and we removed the chest tube. But unfortunately, the fellow uh, developed distinction that way. Of course, the lung opacities gave me the idea that we are dealing with adult respiratory disease syndrome. Fortunately, it did not happen. See the increased opacities and bilateral chest tube that gave the suspicion that he may go in for adult respiratory disease syndrome. Fortunately, it did not happen. Patient developed down distinction in the grossly distributed bowel sounds or sluggish. There are multiple practices of involving walls of the jejunum in the loops. Nematosis, intestine, but the 
diagnosis, an incidental diagnosis. Nothing to do with the chest. I will show you the pictures. You can see the dilated loops, you can see the plain picture more glossy. Simple enema wait. But also they said don't worry, just wait. Things will all wait. Dilated power loops. Now, the treatments are antibiotic, vitamins are and folic acid. Going through the literature, the blunt in the riches causes the following refracture, trigger bronchial disruption, exanimation, exanimatic cardiovascular puncture. Common causes are motor vehicle accidents, fall from a height, assault, and sport crushing damage. Now, I will tell the each. The history is very important and each historical aspect gives us a diagnosis clue to the diagnosis. If the direct impact as happened in this patient is a wrist fracture, heart and lung contusion and flat chest. Flat chest of course fortunately did not happen because of the head fell. Now, if there is a direct impact over a hyperextended neck, as happens in the motor vehicle accidents or happens in some other situations, it's a like letting go tracking injury. Therefore, history is very, very important. If it's a direct impact, the close glottis, especially it happens when swimming. A person is swimming and has got a close glottis, it's a bronchial disruption. Now, the rapid deceleration, it has happened in one case when I was in North Carolina College, where the spine, you know, they go around the ladder. Suddenly he fell down and he had aortic fracture. We lost the case. At the time we were developing the cardiology department, I should thank those 10 cardiologists who will be involved But unfortunately, we could not save the patient. It's a rapid deceleration. It's a vertical deceleration far from the height, think of aortic fracture. Then spinal extension injuries, rupture of the thoracic tract. If you have got a spinal extension injury, it's falling down on the head, on the back. It will be a, suppose he is hit on the chest from the front and he falls on the back. It is a thoracic death of the chest. Sudden rise in intraabdominal pressure leads to diaphragmatic death. Therefore, from the physical history examination, so many clues to the diagnosis could be made. That's what the important thing in this case is. Then physical signs. Now, if you have got a yari obstruction, this is a very life threatening thing. You think of disruption of the following body in that trachea bronchi. If you have got abnormal chest wall movement, paradoxical movement, both sides not moving in and out simultaneously, it's not asleep. You think of the failed chest, the base is the failed chest. Then, absence of breast sounds, please remember what happened in this case. Respiratory failure also sometimes leads to absence of breast sounds. Pneumothorax and hemothorax is both sides. One critical point I raise in this case is even if the hemothorax is less than, usually we don't aspirate less than 50, 100 km. But when you have got a bilateral hemothorax, indication for aspiration is more aggressive and you should put the tube on both sides. As we did successfully in this case, shift km on the right side and 150 km on the left side. Of course, low blood pressure definitely indicates this will be hemorrhage. Then, pain in the back of the neck, think of the refractory dislocation. Very important in the primary can is that not to move the neck, give support so that we don't injure the spine. Of course, immobility and coma sometimes occurs and we due to the brain injury either due to hypoxia or direct associated with the brain. Chest radiograph gives uh, fractures the upper rib, I think the tentative one with this reaction. This is some of the things that point. If the media stem is widened more than 8 centimeters, think of that. At the origin of the subterranean artery, especially on the right side, think of the artery. Nemo media stenum, it can definitely indicate there is airway disruption or lung confusion. Pneumothorax thinks the uh, thing of these are all X-ray signs. Think of bronchial rupture and lung plasma. Massive hemothorax, a major blood pressure loss here comes in the cortex of the resin surgeons, where we put the major tubes and put an endothelial tube and watch it. Elevated hemi diaphragm indicates a diaphragmatic rupture. Opacity of lung fields has happened in this case, a lung confusion, first rate is followed, is not going for it. This was this was Voidant cardiac silk out indicates a cardiac injury, cardiac tapna. Here, previously, the x ray the patient has got on his records will be extensively useful. Mark alignment of the spine, of course, here we are sure there is a lateral view, the spine is normal, think of a fractal. 
The mortality in thoracic injury, chest alone leads to 9 percent, but associated chest and bone comes to 23 percent, chest and head comes to 23 percent, and chest and abdomen comes to 30 percent. Now, common cause of upper air incisions are bed secretions and foreign body, uncommon cause of severe maxillary based injury and lingual tract infection. Life threatening injuries include airway obstruction, lead, foreign body secretions, lingual tract infection. Of course, the basic things apply, what basic things apply to any injury, multiple trauma victim, is that maintain the ABCD, airway, circulation, etc. These are the life threatening injuries. Now, Koparama Prabhu. Now, what have happened in this case is the fellow had a very good recovery. That taught me something that we could manage. Now, I totally agree with the blunt comment made by the particular surgeons. Don't waste time when you get the case calling for the specialist. Call for the specialist. They are definitely more trained. They are definitely more knowledgeable in that area. There is no doubt about it. But at the same time, what they can do before the arrival is sometimes more life saving than what they can do after the arrival. I repeat it again. What they can do before the arrival sometimes is definitely sometimes more life saving than what they can do after the arrival. This is very important. This is what the current surgeon told I showed him on the slides. He said, he tell this message. What we can do before the arrival is sometimes more life saving what we can do after the arrival. Thank you.